Dear audio engineers, dear mixing friends, everything is renewed. Spring does, as does my hairstyle, my entire studio here, and the new software for the Behringer Wing. It is also new in version 3.0.6. And what new features it has, I'll show you in today's episode of Basti's Bass Hour. Let's get started. Oh no! Yes folks, here it is, the new firmware 3.0.6. We got some new features from the company Behringer. I'm now going to load it in the classic way using this stick here to my Behringer Wing Compact. I've already shown you exactly how that works in a video elsewhere. I'll link it up here in the corner and while I'm loading the firmware onto the console, you can click on the button down there in the corner. Click and subscribe to my channel, turn on the bell and then you will never miss an episode of Basti's Base Hour and of course no more news about the Behringer Wing. Now let's load the firmware. To load the firmware, simply classic insert the stick into the slot, then click on setup on the left side. And here you'll find the update button. It automatically finds the firmware on the stick. And I select it here and say update. Uh, this will take a moment. It's asking me if I really want to do this. I say confirm and now it says update complete. I say okay. And now I need to restart the console. I do this by clicking shut down here at the top, confirm, and then turn off the console and restart it. So when I now jump to setup, you can see here at the bottom left, I have now loaded the new firmware. In my case, the version 306-23. That's simply because I have a beta version here, but later it will of course be the original 306. And then let's begin with the features. Stage connect source name transmission. Yes, folks. Unfortunately, I can't show you this feature here right now because I don't have a stage connect box available. It's loaded in the bus since the tour will start again soon. Ultimately, it's about the name being transmitted via the stage connect line. The second new feature is hold source HR remote RV cast button. To apply setting to all sources in the selected group. This feature is hidden here in the routing. Specifically, when I am up here on the sources, which I already am, now I can copy settings for the sources to the entire source group. I'll show you this with the example of the IS50A source. I select the first channel and now I could, for example, determine where it gets its gain from, meaning the head amp remote. We find it here in the middle, so I can say head amp remote for example off this means the console itself can control the gain settings from the head amp if i now select is50a then the console connected to the interface is50a could control the head amp meaning the gain the same applies to b or c and if i want to apply this to all meaning all channels of the source group is50a then i can simply hold this button then a red frame appears around it. Then it asks me here, apply to all. And I say yes. And if I now look at all the channels, you'll see that all the channels are now set to IS50A as the head amp remote have. If I now say again, okay, I don't want that. I want to be able to control the gain or the head amp control or the gain again on this console. Then I can hold remote off here again. Then it asks again, apply to all. I say yes. And now you see that all channels now back to off. The same applies down here for the RCV cast. RCV cast means in this case that the icon name and color come from the source, from the console where the signal is sent to this console. If I now say AS50A and here RCV cast, it means that the customization the source customization from AS50A is taken over directly. It's really practical when the monitor mixer, for example, pre-assigns all the channels and you turn it on at FOH, then you get the source named at FOH exactly as the monitor mixer names. At the festival, for example, a great thing, if they up there relabel something, rename it, swap channels, then you see it right here in the sources because you are now adopting the customization from the IS50A interface, meaning those that the sources since and if I want to apply this for everyone now, I can just hold this FTV cast here and say yes. And now you see that it's turned on everywhere. FTV cast. Of course, I still need to select a remote. 
With off, it doesn't help me at all. Press and hold the small stop option button to apply settings to the entire playlist. So we would find this feature here if I have created a playlist and want to play from the USB stick. Then there is this little stop button up here, this small stop button. And if I normally press it, it puts a small stop symbol behind the track. This means the playlist plays up to there and stops at this track. Of course, there are playlists like intros where you don't necessarily want every song to play in order. Until now, you had to individually select the songs and set this stop button here. Now with the new function, it's very simple. I hold here once and then you see that the respective stop symbol is set after each track. That means each track will now be played individually. It makes sense if I have very long playlists. I don't have to do it for each track individually, but can simply hold here once and it sets a stop signal after each track. The same goes in the other direction. If I keep this brief, then they are all gone again. AS50 error counter on the setup audio screen to help identify faulty cables and connections. Yes, a very, very good feature, I think. Especially if you have had problems with cable failures or failures of the AES connection once or twice. Now you can simply go to the setup page here and then here at audio, you'll find a new box at the bottom right showing you the AES 50 ports. A, B, and C, uh, then shows us error counters on the sides. Very practical, because you don't necessarily look up at the display throughout the whole evening to see if there's a brief dropout. And if you notice that you have issues with the AES connection, you can check the menu here and immediately see, okay, this port is causing the problems. The next feature is only available on the Wing Compact. How fortunate that I have one here. Wing Compact only. Hold down any control change button and turn the rotor encoder below the main meter to adjust FX parameters. What is the developer trying to tell us? If you put the FX parameters on the wing compact here under user on the custom controls. I have prepared this example by going to setup, CC edit, and I have now assigned the FX parameter from effect slot one to user button one, which in my case is a hall reverb and place the DK. That means here now, you probably can't see it very well on the small display, but here is the decay of the reverb. And when I press and hold it, I'll show you here also in the, on the FX page. You can see here, the decay is currently at 1.57 seconds. And now I can use this encoder beside the display to change the decay. This means I can pretty quickly change the corresponding value here by holding down an FX parameter CC. Otherwise, it doesn't work. You can, of course, also select it here on the effects page. But if I'm somewhere else, I can still hold the FX parameter here and simply change the parameter with the encoder. Many have surely been waiting for the next feature. Bend EQ resets by holding the bend selection button. So. An equalizer I find, of course, in the equalizer. And it works like this. If I have, for example, two equalizers here, and I want to reset equalizer three, then I can simply use this here. Hold the band select button. So, do you see that? There is a brief red frame around the respective button. And once it closes, the equalizer or the band is reset. SD recorder error messages shown in text form. Unfortunately, I can't show you that right now because I don't currently have an error with my SD recorder. But it simply means the text messages are now displayed more clearly. CC button options to change CC bank. Yes. I find this option under setup at CC edit. And when I go to other, and then scroll all the way down here. Then I have the CC bank topic here. And here I can now choose which CC bank I want to jump to. I can also down here. So I have 1 to 16 here now. I could also down here plus 1 and minus 1. Use. That means if I do minus 1 here, then when I press the respective button, 
it would return one bank back. So, that of course gives me now, here on the Wing Compact, nothing. Because on the Wing Compact, I only have the 16 user CC buttons. It's more useful on the large wing, where I really have 16 different layers and can, for example, build a jump layer. I can say this jump layer jumps always via CC1, for example. Or the next jump then here to, uh, CC2. And when I click on it, I get to the respective layer. That means I could build different effect layers, a base layer, and always jump from the base layer to the effect layers, and then back to the main layer. But here on the compact, it's of no use for now. But the feature is there, and for the large wing, for the full-size wing, it's a relatively cool feature. Yes, folks, that was them, the new features of firmware 3.06. Now it is online, you can download it, control, update. I hope you have a lot of fun with it. I think the features are pretty cool as always. You can certainly make use of them. By now you have to honestly say the console has so many features, um, you don't even know anymore what it can do and what it can't do. But that really speaks for the console. I can only highly recommend it to you. Behringer Wing is an absolutely awesome console, especially here in the compact version, but also the larger version. I can only recommend it. In this sense, write in the comments below what you think of the new firmware. And I would be happy if you join again next time at Basti's Base Hour. Take care, your Basti.